First question is from Britty3. Thoughts on Biggest Loser challenges in the workplace? Oh, this, I didn't even know this was a oh, picture. Have you guys at, seen? Look at us. You guys know what these challenges are, right? So mm-hmm. they get like groups of people at work, and we're all going to you know, be in a contest for 90 yeah. days, yeah. see who loses the most weight you know, type of deal. Um, thoughts? What are your thoughts on these? Well, I used, right? to, uh, I used to run one at 24 Fitness. What would mm-hmm. you call it? We called it the Biggest Loser Challenge. Oh, wow. Uh, the difference, though, is that we did not go off of weight. Uh, we measured body fat percentage. Mm. And so it was the the greatest percentage of change mm. uh, over, the, and it was over the course of I believe we did. Do you remember how long I did it for, Justin? We did like three months, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I think it was three months long is what we did. That's it. Be- that's better though because I had a I had a buddy that that did a bet with a. And group. our clients fought over who actually won. Really? Right. I remember that? Too. Yeah, so yeah. I, mine and Adam's clients. So yeah. I had a I had a buddy who he's belongs he's a investment banker and he's got all these buddies that are all investment makers so they all make a lot of money. And they're all real fat and out of shape or whatever. And they made a bet. It was a three-month bet, $50,000. Wow. Who could lose the most weight? Now, my friend won, but he gamed the whole fucking thing. When he did the weigh-in, he bulked up uh, for it. He drank yeah. soy sauce, was eating salt, like got himself hella bloated, hella yeah, bloated. car. Then he cut water, fasted, used the sauna. Yeah. So body fat percentage is a smarter way to measure well, it. No, totally. and, and that's for that exact – so you know, we mentioned in the intro about Biggest Loser starting next week – that's one of the things. So the very I've I watched um, the first probably I want to say four or five seasons of Biggest Loser, and the very first season for those that have, have been fans of the show or watching it, I really liked. I remember when it came out and I thought this is really cool. This is, it was during a time too when like reality TV is like exploding and shit like mm-hmm. that. I was like. You know, finally, like a positive yeah. reality TV. Like the good intention part of it was there in the beginning. Agreed. Yeah, but. When there's that much money on the line, it's only a matter of time before enough people catch wind of it and yeah. figure out how to how game it. How do we it. dramatize this? How do we make it more interesting? Exactly. They and that, and that's exactly what started to happen seasons two, three, four, and beyond was the first one was nobody knew what to expect, how you would win, what the competition would really look like. And it was yeah. just like, it was it felt real. Mm-hmm. And it felt like it was a, a good, authentic show. But then at seasons that come later on, people find out, oh, yeah, if you yeah. get as fat as you can going into the show, sodium load like crazy, water load like crazy, you'll shoot your weight up you know, 20, 30 yeah. pounds, especially for someone who's that overweight. You add somebody somebody who is 300 pounds, yeah. you load them on a, a, a ton of sodium and carbohydrates and gallons of water heading into that. You can manipulate by like yeah. 30 pounds. I want to see, yeah, that, that's one thing I want to pay attention to from watching, it, uh, like how they're handling all that, like how they're handling the testing uh, specifically, if it's just going off of weight, like how much of uh, the after effect are they going to show with them now being immersed back in with their family and like how you know like are they going to follow them a couple months later like they all do that all stuff. that yeah they do so and but they here's the thing they don't discuss the water manipulation at least they had it in the shows that i'd seen so okay. they don't they don't discuss that uh for uh, but what i don't know okay is how many of the trainers on the back end are coaching that way like uh, i mean why dude, wouldn't yeah. you you win you want to win right yeah. you know why right, not? right. it's weight and it's unless it's explicitly in the rules not to do it which it may be it may be in the rules that says Water manipulation is is forbidden or whatever. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that, how do you you can't for how could you forbid that? Like I can manipulate your water just by messing with your carbohydrate intake and your water. Sure, intake. but maybe they'll say things like you have to be hydrated or you know uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So so here's the thing with these challenges in the workplace, they're phenomenal ways to set yourself up for failure. Unfortunately, um, I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong about a contest, um, but your chances of succeeding long term. <laughs> After following one of these is very very low, because it's a it's a it's a perfect storm. Yeah. You're it doesn't typically, teach you anything. Typically, you you're you're in a situation where you're not working out, not eating right, and so this gives you the spark to do something. But now you're in a contest, so you really go for it. You do everything you can. You use willpower the whole time. Nothing wrong with willpower in the short term, but willpower does not work in the long term. Mm-hmm. Behaviors work long term. If you have to use willpower long term, you're going to fail every single willpower time. Willpower is just the spark. No. That's it. And so what happens, they go in there super amped, super motivated, do everything. It's all about willpower. The second the contest is over, it's done. I'm done. I'm over it. And people tend to bounce out of it and bounce out of it worse than they were when they first entered. Now, here's how I'm going to defend it. Would I do one? Hell yes, I would. Because I think I'm a, a master of manipulating my fucking body composition. And if there was a chance for me to win $50,000 amongst sure. my friends or coworkers, 
I know that I could do that. And what, regardless if I think it's healthy, ideal, or anything like that. So sure. I think the the mindset that you go into it matters everything. So mm -hmm. if you know that, if you know that you're going to be manipulating water, manipulating your, your body composition to win a competition, then it's like a sport and you're treating it that way. Go after the money. Fuck it. Mm -hmm. But if you think that this is a good idea to get yourself in shape, that I don't think that's a no. smart I don't I don't think it's because to your point, it is it's setting you up for failure because you're, the way you're going about it is not ideal. It reminds but, me of have you, you? I'm sure you guys train clients who were like, you know what? One of my goals is to run a marathon, so I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna train for. I'm gonna run a marathon, and so they use that as their motivation. Yeah. They train. They change everything about their lifestyle. They do the marathon. After the marathon is over, it's everything's done. Well, I think younger me would have been all about it. Like you know, this is this is a great way to get people involved and and to get them moving and to get them motivated and, and you know fueled towards the right direction. But you know, experience in dealing with people and seeing the trends of how this all plays out. You like there's a lot more negative to it than positives for me. I just see the rebound effect. I see people being even more uh, likely to not want to repeat that again, and so therefore it's like they're in a different place uh, about their view of fitness, even then from then on out. Now that being said, I mean, <clears throat> are you or are you guys not on the same page that I am? That if your family, who probably doesn't have good relationships with exercise and food like we all do, put up a ten thousand dollar bet. That who can manipulate or who can lose the most weight? Yeah, if or, it's just a game, sure. Right. Sure, well, sure. Would you not? Sure, I mean, sure. Because you guys know that you're probably better at that than any, any of them. It's just a game. You know, at that point, yeah. it's just a game. But if you're entering into it and thinking, oh, this is going to get me in shape, this is yeah. going to work for me or whatever, um, you're going to set yourself up to fail. It's actually a terrible strategy. And if, it, it actually might even make it worse yeah, it will. than if you never did it in the first no, place. No, no, no. It will. It will. I mean, I, I think it, unless you have that mindset that it's a game, you know, the same way that you yeah. approach training modalities that are like sports i.e crossfits you know if you go into it with that mentality then then by all means it's you know I'm playing i play basketball because it helps me stay in shape and i love playing basketball do i think it's the best way to stay in shape absolutely not so if you go into a competition like this knowing it's a sport it's a competition it's not the healthy way for you to stay in shape then by all means but if you enter it like a, a lot of people do innocently thinking like, oh, this is a great way to start my new year and, and get in shape and get all the work people yeah. together. Let's get a bunch of people together. Yeah, We're for gonna the do fun a of it, then yeah. cool. Right. Yeah. Yep. But right. it's not going to change you.